fruit of the Spirit? Do I want to live in the Garden of Eden where everything I need is there if I, if I got anybody in the room? So I understand that I can create what I see. And a lot of times we have mess and stress in our life and we want to think it's because um, uncle so-and-so messed with us or, or uh, mama didn't think we we're pretty or daddy was a deadbeat dad. And the truth is, is where you are right now is as much up on you as it is somebody else helping. Amen. You've got a cooperation with that. That's the truth as a T.I. is, right? Amen. So that's not to put anybody under any kind of condemnation. That's to say, here today, we're in the middle. I can begin creating the life that I want to live. Are y'all still with me? Amen. How many really believe that? Amen. How many believe that you've got the power in the name of Jesus to break Amen. off any chain? Amen. You've got the power to have right relationships, good relationships. You've got the power, if you're young, you've got the power to make good grades. Amen. 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 You've got the power to make good grades. You've got the power to, to be and to do in life what you want to do. You have to believe that. Amen. And if you don't believe that you can... And you're just letting the letting the uh, the rapids take you downstream. You don't know where you're going to end up. But when you understand that you are part and a party to the life that you live, you can say, "I'm I'm going to begin taking some ownership and responsibility to it." So today, I want to talk to you about a part of creating that God created for us, and it's increase. We have been invited, Brother Travis. We have been invited to increase. Everything about God is increase. God wants to lift us. He wants to raise us. Now it's okay if you all get in really uh, receptive mode and thinking, but it's not all right if you all just zone it out on me. So I'm going I'm to get y'all to say amen. amen. I'm going to get you to say hallelujah. I'm going to get you to high five some, somebody say he's talking to you today. He's trying to bring you up from where you are. No reason to peck with the chickens when God's called you to soar with the eagles. Amen. Amen. How many are not going to put up the leftovers when you're a king's kid? Amen. Amen. How many are not going to strive and struggle when God has called you to abound? How many are not going to be settling for the scraps when God seated you at the table, seated in the presence of your enemy at a banqueting table, and his, and his banner over you is love? Amen. 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 So if you have your Bibles turned for this invitation to increase, I want you to begin reading at verse 26. If you'd like to stand for the reading of the word, you can. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. If you have it, say amen. 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 Good. All right, y'all with me today? Amen. How many want to increase? Amen. How many want to grow? Amen. That's a way to say it. How many want more? Amen. Now look, I can get real materialistic with this, and the truth is that it'll work for that. But... When you understand that life is so much more than material things, you understand that the good part, the spiritual part, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And how many want more? How many more want, want more power, want more of His Spirit? You want to be more like Jesus. You want to increase in your relationship with God. You want to increase in your authority and your power and your gifting. We all should. So if you got it today, verse 26, and the God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and he said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Father, I ask that you let my tongue speak the pen of a ready writer. Let me yield myself as a member of righteousness today, God, to say with the oracles of God that which needs to be said to the people of God. Let us have anointed ears to hear and to comprehend and understand what you're saying to us personally and what you're saying to us corporately. I'm asking God that you move in every arena of our life 
I'm asking God that you pervade and invade in every, every cell of our being, God. Infuse us and enthuse us and fill us and thrill us. And I'm asking God that everyone here receive a mighty word from you today, God, so that they can know that the invitation to increase is theirs. And whether they accept the invitation or not, it is totally up to them. Let us receive and let us increase as a church, Lord. Let us increase. And Lord, we'll give you the glory because you are the Lord of the harvest. It's in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we all say, Amen. Amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord one more time. I want you to make noise just one more time. Put your Bible in your lap. And that's the hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. All right, we're having a good time today. You ready for a word from God? Okay, can I establish this here in this place right now, even before I preach, and tell you, eyes wide open, looking right in your eyeballs, that God wants to increase you. God wants to bless you. And God wants to bless you more than you even want to be blessed. But if, when your blessing gets in conjunction and cooperation with His desires, oh my Lord, there's no telling, but you'll be real telling. Amen. Amen. If I got anybody in the room, please it. Alright, so it's a good place and a good time to take notes because this is actually pretty deep. It's uh, you got to you gotta open yourself up to be expanded beyond the the normal and the the everyday uh, understanding of what God's saying. God wants to give you revelation into what he's saying past just what the word said. You all understand that? He wants us with all you're getting, get understanding. So number one, the first element of the invitation to increase has to do with his image and his likeness. Everybody say his image and his likeness. I want this side to say his image and I want this side to say his likeness. His image, likeness. His and his likeness. Now, in as much as we believe and we understand that we are created in the name, name and nature of God, we are God-like beings. We say this here alone, we say this a lot because we need to understand when you're godly, God-like, you're not going to be just living any old kind of way. You can't just talk any old kind of way. You can't just act a fool anytime you want because God has called you to be like Him. You are like Him. Say amen if you believe it. This is, this is Holiness 101. It's Pentecost 101. We believe that we're supposed to be like Jesus. And how many want to be more like Him? Amen. The truth is, is you already are. But the mystery and the, and the, uh, the, the majesty behind what He is saying has to do with the words that He's using. How many have a mirror in your pocketbook? All you ladies that have a mirror. When you hold up a mirror or you step into the restroom and you look in a mirror, what do you see? You see yourself. So if you see yourself in the morning, you might see yourself with, with hair curlers and, uh, and, and no uh, makeup. Or you gentlemen might be like Brother Jerry Longmire and had lost his razor. <laughs> We see ourselves when we look in the mirror, right? It's a reflection. It's a reflection. And God said, when He said that I've created man in my image and my likeness, He said, I want to create something that will look like me. I want to look down at man and I want to see my own reflection. His image and His likeness. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. This has to do with a universal law that cannot be broken. If I say cannot be broken. Now we established this last week, for, for those of you that weren't here, uh, a universal law is not something like a natural law because we all know that laws are made to be broken. broken. If the law says that the speed limit is 65, I know good and well that every single one of you except maybe Sister Joe is driving 72, 73, 75, maybe 80 miles an hour. I can't get no amen in this Presbyterian church this morning. Because the law was made to be broken. <laughs> I love this story because, because God spoke to Moses on the mountain. Y'all know this story. 
He's up with God. He sees the glory of God. He's having this powerful, powerful experience. And, and God, with his finger, writes into the tablets Ten Commandments. You all know this story, right? Moses comes down from the mountain and he sees all the people have done, went, hog, wild. It was not just girls gone wild, it was Israelites gone wild. It was the first installment. It did a video on it. It was nuts. They had a golden calf. They were all dancing around the calf. He was so mad, he took the Ten Commandments. He's the first one to break all Ten Commandments at one time. Because he just threw the tablets down. Ground up the golden calf made them all break it. Can y'all imagine that? Then he goes back up on the mountain because he's hot and he's bad. He comes back down the mountain with 600 some laws. Called the law of who? The law of Moses. If you want to make that the law of God, that's the law of Moses. So, and then Jesus steps on the scene and says, I can undo all that with two things. Do you want 10? Do you want 600? Or do you want two? I'll take two. It's a little easier. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Actually, it's three. It's two, two and a half. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Made it easy. Aren't you glad that God makes it easy for us? Amen. But these laws aren't like those laws because laws are made to be broken. And even the law of loving God, people don't love the Lord like they should. Some of us don't love ourselves like we should. We misabuse the temple. We, we do ourselves wrong when we, when we take guff off somebody and we don't deserve it. Say amen. amen. Or we don't love our neighbor. We, we'll, we'll talk about them at the drop of a hat. Oh, you ain't got nothing good to say? You know what they say? If you ain't got nothing good to say, come sit by me. That's right. <laughs> so said the long tongue Holy Ghost woman. Amen. Some, some of us have had long hair, long dresses, and long tongues to match. So we understand that those laws are made to be broken, but a universal law is a law that cannot be broken. So establish this. It's a law you can't break. It's something that upholds the whole establishment of our universe and our world and everything that's in it. So his image, his likeness, establishes something called the law of attraction. And I say the law of attraction. We always want to get things and we strive to get things, but the truth is, is you don't get what you want. You get what you've got. Amen. And we'll make this plain. Some of us will chase our tails all day long trying to get something that will elude us and, and we'll keep chasing it and it will keep running from us. Because we haven't become the thing that that's attracted to. And God created the world in such a way, His image, His likeness, that the God that is reflects back up onto us that which we reflect to Him. That which we give Him, God gives us. And so when we give the world and we give society an attitude and we expect that people aren't going to like us, we're seldom disappointed. Because the Bible says that according to your faith, it's going to be rewarded according to the way that you believe it in. As a man believes in his heart, that's the way it is. It's called the law of attraction. And so when you begin to put out things from yourself that's good and wholesome, when you give of your tithe and your offering, it's the same thing. You're reflecting to God. God, I believe this is what you do. You give it back to Him. And God says, exactly. I'm, you're created in my image, in my likeness, and whatever you're like, that's what I'm going to be like back to you. Amen. 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 So, that's why He said to the merciful, He shows mercy. Whatever you will give God, Whatever you will show, Lord, I want to be like you. This is what I believe about you. This is what you see. And I had a, a good conversation with Sister Brenda last night. The people who get real judgmental and they, they feel like God is vengeful and bad. And because he is, they are. And then that very thing comes back home to roost. When it's their baby gets pregnant. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church this morning. 
We can get real judgmental, look down our nose at somebody until it comes home to roost. But it always will because it's how God set it up when he said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. That means whatever they're like, whatever man is like, that's what the world is going to be like back to them. Loving people live in a loving world. Mean people live in a mean world. It's the same world. When you start seeing things different, things will start being different. Amen. When you'll start walking on your job and expecting things to go for you and believing that in your heart of hearts and just knowing what you're doing is you're saying, this is what I believe God is like. And God is going to respond in kind and say, that's exactly what I'm like. Amen. But this is tough. This is tough because we, we want to think that Everything that we did that, that deserves, deserves something good, we got something good for it. And everything that bad happens, we didn't do nothing to deserve that. We didn't make that happen. We weren't involved in that at all. And things like our thoughts, our fears, our words. It's quiet today, but I want you all to get this get in conjunction to that which we don't want to have. I've said this. When you're afraid, you attract to you what you don't want and you keep away from you what you do want. Amen. It's because you're created in this mighty likeness and image of God and it is so powerful. The power of I am. Are we going to say I am? I am. God said my name is forever. I am that I am. And because we're created in the name and the nature of God, if he's I am, then I I am, I am. Look at your neighbor and say, I am, I am. Oh, it's quiet today. I know I'm losing somebody, but turn to somebody and say, I am, I am. You are whatever you say you are, and that's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Reflect back to God when you believe that he is, and in not many days hence, you will see a turnaround and a change in your situation. I'm talking about the invitation to increase. Understand that it's like God to increase. How many believe that God is rich in houses and lands? Do you think that God is short on his light bill? Do you think God is asking you to hold a dollar? <laughs> Do you think that he's in trouble? He's not. And you're created in his image. And so what you have to do is understand I'm created in His image. I already have everything that I need and could ever desire. I'm going to believe that. I'm going to act as though that is so, even if I don't see the manifestation of it. Because just like God who calls things that be not as though they were, I believe. It's what I talked about before in the praise service. Getting an attitude of gratitude that it's already done before you ever see the manifestation of it. And it will happen. It has to happen because you're created in His image and in His likeness. If you believe it today, put a hand up and say, I am. I am. I am. Amen. Now I want you to get, uh, we're going to do a little exercise here today. I want you to get something good that you really believe that you are and that you want to be. For somebody, you need to say, I am healthy. Somebody needs to say, I am rich. It's, it's not saying I have or I do. It's saying I am. I am this. The image that you put out is the, is the thing that comes back to you. So when I want you to get something that's pertinent to you and say it to somebody right here. Just tell somebody. Something good. Tell somebody something good. Becky, I am filthy rich. <laughs> she gets that. She gets that revelation. Come on, somebody say, I am healthy. Look at somebody say, I am the picture of health. Look at somebody say, I am the weight I desire to be. Look at somebody say, I am beautiful. I am strong. I am joyful. So tell somebody, say, I am happy. 
I'm happy. What a great thing to be. And when you decide that you're that, all of creation, all the host of heaven, everything in the universe gets back in agreement with you and mirrors that back to you because you're created in his image and his likeness. You're standing up in front of a supernatural mirror and whatever you're putting out is what's looking back at you. I can't say this enough and I can't take too much time on this point, but I'm going to tell you, if you're standing in front of a mirror, you close one eye, the joker in the mirror is closing one eye. That's how strong it is. That's how strong it is. Somebody changed their hair color. Yesterday it was a different color than today. It's, a, it's another color. And whatever it is, when you look in the mirror, that's what it is. The mirror reflection doesn't keep the old one. In the moment that you change, the mirror says the same thing. So that's good news. So maybe up until now, you've been saying, I'm busted and disgusted. I'm mad. I'm, I'm about to throw down on somebody. I got an attitude. I'm a, I'm, you have this thing about you. And in a moment in time, when you change it, the mirror shows what you change. That's good news. Because some of us have messed up in the mirror. How many have ever messed up in the mirror? How many put out something that came back to you and you, did, you, you thought you are trying to get what you wanted but you didn't want what you got after you got it? And even man, it's tight but it's right, ain't it, Brother Kendricks? Can I give you some cry pie? <laughs> Can I give you some cry pie? Number two, the second element of this invitation. How many glad that God is inviting us? is that this second invitation in, involves gender. And it's his fullness separated. And the scripture says, male and female, he created them. He created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. He created man first, right? And in man, in the first inception, the first incarnation of man, inside that man was male and female. Now, I don't want to get, I mean, look, I'm not, I don't know about body parts. I don't know about how all this works, I, but I want y'all to get a picture of this. The first man had everything in him. And then God said, it's not good that man should be alone. So he put man asleep, and he took out of his rib, and he formed this other thing called the woman. This other thing. Well, the Bible says, he that finds... A good wife finds a good thing. <laughs> so I'm not talking about thing, the thing. I'm talking about, you know, a good thing. It's a, everybody says it's a good thing. And he took his mystery and his beauty and his manifold wisdom and he separated it out. He, he divided it. Now this is, this is what you need to know in the scheme, the grand scheme of increase. First and foremost, a family doesn't increase with children unless there's male and female. I don't have to go into details on that. You all know what I'm talking about. It's the law of genders, the yin and the yang. It's the opposites attracting. It's, it's, the, it's the total man being put back together because the Bible says that when a, uh, a, a, father, when a man leaves his mother and his father, he shall join with his wife and they shall be one flesh. They will become one. And so the woman has the, the kindness, or hopefully, I mean, every, every relationship's different, but the woman has this kindness and this good thing, and, and maybe the home-making, and maybe the, maybe the nurturing part, and, and then the man has to go out and kill the animals for food, and go out and slay the dragons, and make sure that everyone's protected, and, and bow up against the enemy, and, and, and then when the kids aren't acting right, to bring that discipline, because that's the opposite of the two sides, and here is the mystery. That his fullness is separated out. And if God is going to increase you, it's going to take somebody with you to help that increase happen. Say amen if it's all right. No man is an island. And as much as God could bless you, if it were only you, it's not only you. It's you and the whole wide world. And God wants to give you somebody to help you. Say amen. 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 
So you want to increase in something. There is someone who can partner with you that has the tools of the trade that you don't have. Amen. So when God separated out his fullness between the genders, between male and female, what he said was, I'm not, I'm not giving anybody everything, but I'm giving everybody something. Amen. Amen. And you're responsible for the something that you have. But you need to be on the lookout for who's got what you don't have. Because that's how increase happens. It's synergy. It's getting together. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Now I realize that we sing that song about the day that we cross the chilly Jordan. About the day that we leave this earth suit and we put our eyes upon Jesus. And I know that that's wonderful and I believe every word of that song. I believe that there is a heaven someday. I believe that there's streets of gold and pearly gates. I believe it. But I don't believe that you have to die before you get to heaven. I don't believe that you have to cross the chill at Jordan before you see Jesus. I believe that every day that you wake up and understand that heaven can be a place on earth and that if you'll open your spirit eyes that you can see Jesus, you can see Jesus in me and I can see Jesus in you. If you'll open your eyes and look when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it will be when we all see Jesus, I see Jesus, and you see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. I can't get no amen in here today. But I believe it, I believe it, I believe it. There's a law of gender in the earth. And you bring your qualities, and you bring your giftings to the table. And then God brings someone to you. In a church, we have, we have mom and dad. We have moms and dads. Let me say it that way. We have brothers and sisters. And sometimes the brothers can do things like cook or clean that maybe are attributed to the sisters. And sometimes the sisters can fix a car or know how to run something technical and the brothers can't do that. It's no surprise. Amen. He took everything out of the one man and split them. So we all have these dual kinds of things going on with us. And when we understand that God places every gift in you, every gift in you is for increase of something. You bring to the table what you can do and who you are. And you don't, you're not shy or bashful behind it, but you own it. Everybody say own it. Own it. And you become it. And you understand that His fullness has been separated. And we are part of the body of Christ. I am not. Uh, there, everybody say there is a God, and you're not Him. That's that's a good thing to know. You don't have His job, but you are a part of Him. You are a part. Everybody say a part. And it takes a part, every part, to bring to become the body of the Christ, the body of Jesus here in the earth. As He is, so are you in the earth. You believe it? Amen. Amen. Number three, the third element of invitation to increase. Is this alright today? Amen. Has to do with this blessing. Everybody say it's blessing. Yes. So, how many believe that if God blesses something, it's just blessed? Yeah. It can't not be blessed. It's just blessed. Yeah. How many believe that you're blessed? And if you're blessed, you cannot be blessed. But you got to get an attitude about it because sometimes the enemy, his chief uh, job is to deceive you. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes as an angel of light and he'll deceive the very elect if it's possible. He's coming to trick you out of your blessing. So you have to know and believe that when God blessed Adam, blessed them, Adam and Eve, he was blessing Sherry. It just left me. Let Sherry and Larry. <laughs> I just had a senior moment right in front of y'all. <laughs> Should have known me around. When God blessed Adam and Eve, he was blessing Larry and Sherry. 
He was blessing Dave and Dave Filia. He was blessing us. He was blessing the human race in the inception of mankind. Do you all believe that? His blessing has to do with cause and effect. Everybody say cause and effect. This is a universal law. When there is a cause, when something happens, it causes something else to happen. There's no, uh, there is always a reaction to an action. Right? You all learn this in chemistry? To every action, there is a reaction. What? Uh, baby, you got I don't know what you said. To every action, there's a... Say it loud, huh? Equal and opposite reaction. Equal and opposite reaction. Thank you. See, she's, she's fresh, from the, fresh from the science class. She's got this. Cause and effect. So God knew that when He made man... And he made woman that they were going to need a blessing to get by. And that's you and that's me. I don't know if I could make it without the blessing of God. And I thank God that I have it. Every day that you get up and you're six feet above the earth instead of under, you got a blessing. Every day that you take in that free breath that you didn't do anything for, your body just does it without even thinking about it. You don't even think about your heart beating. You don't think about your brain sending signals. Thinking about how I'm walking this way. Now I'm going to walk this way. I don't even think about these things. It is the it is the, the blessing of God. The blessing of life. So you have this blessing. And it's the cause. And it will affect everything. Cause and effect. But when you become deceived and you think, all of a sudden, I'm not being blessed. All of a sudden, the people who used to like me, they don't call anymore. All of a sudden, everything's going wrong with my child. All of a sudden, the world is just going to hell in a handbag. It's going down the slippery slope. Foot on a banana peel, they're on a skateboard. And we get in this mindset, we're causing, a, that's another cause that's going to affect other things. It's the negative. It's the positive and the negative. That's exactly right. And when we understand, hey, I've got a blessing from God. I may not have what I need right now, but I know I've been blessed. So I don't know how it's going to come, but I have a blessing. I am blessed. I am blessed. I want you to get that about yourself. Look at somebody and say, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. My life is supernaturally charmed. Goodness and mercy are following me. I believe good things are going to happen. Does it mean that bad things will never happen? Of course not. But I bet I bounce back a whole lot quicker. Amen. Looking for the next good thing Amen. instead of looking for the next bad thing. You know, I come from Virginia, and they're a little bit superstitious in, in Virginia. Maybe in East Texas, too. But they always say, things happen in threes. So if something bad happens, they're going to look for at least two more things bad to happen. And like we said, we're created in the image and the likeness of God, and whatever you're putting in the mirror is coming right back at you. You're looking for it. You're going to find it. Seek, and you'll, you'll find. Whatever you look for, you will find it. If you're looking for trouble, oh my Lord, here it comes. Amen. But if you're looking for a blessing, it could be as simple as you see something or you read something that blesses your life. If you're looking for a, the blessing that is already there, it could be as simple as the person that's sitting next to you that you could hold their hand. The person that you have in your life, the church that you attend. Dare I say it as a, as a something that would seem very self-serving, the pastor that loves you, that you have. I love y'all. You know, I don't know if you've ever had a mean preacher, but I've had a few. You got one that loves you. I'll go to back and you let somebody come up and talk bad about you to me. I'll say, oh no, you did. <laughs> the little things, the car in your driveway, maybe you want a new one. Thank God for the one you got. 
the roof over your head, the food that we have. Oh, my Lord, in the United States, we are so blessed. We don't have to worry about getting water out of our tap. We don't have to worry about stepping out into the street, our baby stepping out in the street and someone gunning them down or a bomb going off. How blessed are we? And when we get into this mindset of I have his blessing, I have his blessing, I am blessed. I want you to say it one more time and I want you to put the emphasis on the am. I am blessed. Tell somebody, I am blessed. I think it helps just a little bit if you move your head when you say it. I am blessed. I am blessed. <laughs> That's perfect. Number four. His command. Everybody say his command. So he, he blessed them. He created a male and female and he blessed them. And he said, be fruitful and multiply. Everybody say his command. Do you realize you've been commanded to increase? You have been commanded, you have been told by God to be fruitful, to have fruit. Now, we understand this is a spiritual thing. God says that you're to have the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance, and faith. These things are not optional equipment on the uh, spiritual vehicle that God has given you. They are mandatory things that you need in your vehicle. Say amen. How many believe that you need the fruit of the Spirit in your life? Amen. But God didn't just say have fruit. He said be fruitful. Be full of fruit and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. This is not a suggestion. When he told Adam and Eve this, they were going to be the catalyst for the population of the world. Six and a half, seven billion people now on the planet. Be fruitful and multiply. You better... So, some whatever thousands of years later, we can all be here at Life Church, right? Yeah. They better be fruitful and multiply. But how many believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And whatever He told Adam and Eve, He's telling you and He's telling me. Now, look, for some of you all that have had your children, I'm not asking, asking you to go undo anything, I'm not asking you to go have some more babies. <laughs> Please, it, nobody ask us to do it. Say amen if it's all right. Amen, amen. But there's more than one way to be fruitful and multiply. And God wants you to have an abundant entrance into his kingdom. And so everyone needs fruit. Everyone needs to multiply. Everyone needs to increase. And that is not a suggestion. It's a command. And God said, be fruitful and multiply. Everybody look at somebody and say, do it. Say, do it. Do it. Amen. That is the law of compensation. That is the law that says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply you when you get an agreement with me. When you do what I say, there's a blessing. How many believe to every obedience, there's a blessing? Amen. How many believe that, that you can't do anything without there being an effect on it? So the law of compensation says that when I do any kind of work, whether it be spiritual work, uh, literal work, material work, that there is a compensation for that work. Now, that whether that check comes from my employer, and I promise you, if you got a job, then you go and you serve 40 hours on it, and come payday, they say, we decided not to pay you this week. I guarantee you on Monday morning, you ain't going back. I can't get no amen. You're going to say, take this job and shove it. In fact, you're going to say, I will see you in court because you owe me what I work for. I can't get no amen. We understand the law of compensation when it comes to our literal work. But we don't understand the universal law. That sometimes there's spiritual work that you think that you're never going to see a reward for. But the Bible says, be not weary in well doing. The laborer is worthy of his hire. You will reap in due season if you faint not. There is a payday that's not always Friday in the kingdom of God. But because he said be fruitful and multiply, you've got to know that when you put a little effort to it, when you take one step, God will take two toward you. When you do something, that image, that attraction, 
you're looking like something, God's going to look like something. They say, don't do nothing, won't be nothing. Amen. 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 But when you get this attitude, God has told me to be fruitful and multiply. There has got to come a recompense to what I do. Now this works in the positive and it works in the negative. Oh yes. There's a recompense when we treat, cheat, mistreat, do somebody wrong. There's a payday. Right? And some of us have been raised with the, with the notion that we can... We can live like hell and never pay for it as long as we say the prayer on our deathbed. Help me. And I don't want to undo the forgiveness of Jesus. This doesn't have to do with that. His grace covers you. You understand that? His grace covers you. But the Bible says whatever you sow, you will reap. You're going to, it's coming back. It's coming back. And so we got to get ourselves moving in right directions. We need to say, I'm, I've been invited to increase, and there is a law of recompense, and it is on my way, whether, whether it comes in my finance, or it comes in my spirit man, or it comes in my relationship, or if it comes in my household, it is for sure coming. And though payday may not be Friday, it's for sure, and the check is in the mail, and it ain't going to bounce. God is good on His Word. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Will you take just a moment and say hallelujah? hallelujah. Take just a moment and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for my reward. Thank you for my reward. Thank you for my reward. Look, I believe in a pearly gate. And I believe in a mansion someday. But once I get there, I won't need anything. I need something right now. I need God to break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. I can't get no amen in here today. I believe that God has got something for me on the here. And the now the law of compensation says it's on its way. I believe this command. Be fruitful and I will multiply. I will increase. I'm obeying this command. How many are with me? Amen. Just two more real quick. Everybody say his infilling and his fulfilling. I want this side to say his infilling and I want this side to say his fulfilling. Everybody say his infilling, his fulfilling. One more time. And his fulfilling. The reason why I use those two terms is because those two terms have to do with each other. You're helping me in the back. The scripture says, So he created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female. He created them. Then he blessed them. And he said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Now, obviously, he was speaking to uh, Adam and Eve to fill the earth with people. And here now, we're not in the literal Garden of Eden. We're on the other side of the world. I, I guess Garden of Eden was over there. Who knows where it is? But we'll say it was over there somewhere. And here we are over here. People have filled the earth. So obviously he was speaking that in a little term to, to Adam and Eve. But how many know that we have this treasure in what? In earthen vessels. From the dust of the earth he created you. In fact, uh, you know, science says that everything came out of the primordial ooze. And we, we resist that. We, we say, oh, that can't be. God created everything it is. And then you just look back on the history of the world. It says, it says let, the, uh, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind. Let the earth bring it forth. You come from the dirt and you're going back to the dirt. How many believe it? So when he said fill the earth, he wasn't just talking about the earth, the literal earth. He was talking about you. Everything about God is a filling. He wants to fill. On the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. He wants to infill you. He wants to fill you up. How many believe it? This side is my infilling. This side is my fulfilling. The reason why those two things are related has to do with the law of gestation. The law of gestation says that once a seed is planted, it will bring forth a harvest. But there is a time between when the seed is planted and the harvest is yielded. There's a time. There's a time. Everybody said there's a little time involved. So God called, called everything 
to reproduce after its own kind and to reproduce after its own kind. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. And the secret to that, to knowing that, is that everything that exists has a seed on the inside of it. And the seed on the inside of it dictates that there has to be a harvest. But there is a time between when the seed is planted and the seed yields forth a harvest, and that's called gestation. So ladies know about this because once you uh, become with child initially, it takes how long? Nine long months. Feet in the air, ice cream and pickles, <laughs> screaming and hollering on a table for about six hours to bring that seed to fruition. So this is the secret of invitation. Payday is not always Friday in God, but it's sure if you get the seed planted, there will be a harvest. But you have to wait. You have to wait. You have to be patient. You have to understand that everything, everything doesn't happen overnight. God who was God could have created everything in the, in the world in one second. How many believe it? But he took six days to do it. And do you really, well, six little days or not, neither here nor there, do you really think that God needed six days? No. Do you think God needs a whole week no. to heal your body? No. Do you think God needs ten years to heal your marriage? Do you, don't you believe that instantaneously everything that you believe is already yours in seed form? But here's why we don't see the fulfillment of it. It's because we don't keep the infilling of it. You let it leak out. You get filled up. You walk out of here in faith. You believe that it's done. You know that it's done. But as soon as something comes in opposition on the outside of this room, you leak out. You don't stay filled up. And because you don't stay filled up, you never experience the full filling. And that's why he said fill the earth. Not just fill it up on the inside, but then fulfill your purpose. Fulfill your plan. There's a gestation period for just getting started to get into the end but if you will take one step and put it in one foot and put it in front of the other and you keep moving in the direction of what you want and don't take one step forward two steps back but keep, keep going forward you will see the end of where the seed started to harvest you'll get there it's a law of gestation it's the law of it takes a little time. Put a hand on somebody and say, don't worry, it takes a little time. We're talking about creating the world that we want to live in. We're talking about increasing. I'm talking about you being increased. And I believe that God will give you a sign that this is a word from God when you walk out of here this week. I believe a sign will come and God will show you, yes, I am the Lord of the harvest. I am the God of increase. I am speaking to you. I want you to increase. But how many know that God takes us from them? Glory to glory, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. We're on a journey. If he gave it to you all at once, you wouldn't know what to do with yourself. Amen. Isn't that the truth? If you had, you know, have you ever seen any kid that gets everything they want before they graduate high school? Sometimes they do not turn out. You have to have some things to look forward to. You have to have some dreams that you want to see planted. You have to have you have to see yourself with the white hairs later on, enjoying your grandchildren and great grandchildren and legacy and and your kids and your family serving the Lord. It doesn't start when you're 18 and you're 19, but every day you can see yourself moving toward the gestation of your dreams coming to pass and every evolving into different and higher dreams and pictures of yourself. I want to say this this church. You know, this church started with a handful of people, three families and a community center just 11 years ago. After a year, we bought this building. Still just a handful of people. And the building just did not look like what it looks like now. Those that were here say, amen. amen. But we've, we've worked on it. We did the, the fellowship hall first. We had church in there. Then we fixed on this. Then we fixed on that. Then we fixed on the outside of the building. And guess what? We're not done. I believe God's got something for this church. A fullness for this church. I see it wall to wall, wall to wall people. But if God gave us wall to wall, wall to wall people right now.
now. What will we be believing for? I'm believing for more. Everybody say more. more. I see another sanctuary. I see it filled to the overflow. I see hundred in the choir. I see the band rocking. I see myself on the front row praising and not leaving. Say amen with the witness. I see the parking lot filled with cars. I see us owning that feed store over there. They don't know it yet. But I think that's our community service and our youth building. I don't want to tell too much because you can't tell too much of your dream. You'll be like Joseph and end up in the pit. But I'm telling you, God causes there to be a gestation of things. He doesn't let everything happen overnight. But just because it doesn't happen overnight doesn't mean that it ain't going to happen. Amen. 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 Yes. Say, it will happen. God has called me to increase. I'm inviting to increase. I'm accepting the invitation. Yes, yes, yes. Just one more, one more point here. Everybody say, your reign... Or everybody say, his reign, your reign. His reign, your reign. I want this side to say, his reign. This side to say, your reign. Say it one more time. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God. The Lord told his disciples, if you suffer with me, then you'll reign with me. You'll go all the way with Jesus. We always sing it. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown. Oh, we shall wear a crown. Help me. And when the battle is over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Come on, keep singing. Wear a crown. Wear a crown. Wear a bright and shiny crown One more time And when it is over We shall wear a crown In the new Jerusalem So we believe this, right? We believe this We've got a shiny crown with stars Will there be any stars in my crown? We sing about crowns. We sing about casting our crowns at his feet. And I can't wait to do it. But that I don't have a crown unless God gives me a crown. I remember Dean praying a beautiful prayer over each of our children one Sunday. I never heard it said like this. But it touched me when she said the word. She said, Lord, put a crown on each one of their heads. Do you realize that God is not calling you someday to rule and reign with Him, but He's calling you today to reign? His reign, your reign, has to do with the law of dominion. Everybody say the law of dominion. The law of dominion says that there is something. I didn't change that, but I'm going to explain that here in a second. Because that's... Pretty fancy scientific language. Perpetual transmutation of energy. <laughs> there was that law of dominion. This is a better way to say it. The law of dominion. The law of dominion says that something's going to be in charge. Somebody's going to be the boss. The earth does not like a void. It doesn't like it when no one's in charge. We see when there's a vacuum of, of leadership what happens. In the Middle East, there's been a vacuum of leadership, and so we have ISIS because of the law of dominion. And the law of dominion says that somebody is going to be in charge. Now, you can let somebody else be in charge of your life, or you can do what the Scripture says here. Y'all ready to do what the Bible says? How many doers of the Word do I have here today? How many believe that God wants you to do what the Bible says? Not just hear it. He said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, obviously, he was speaking to Adam and Eve, who were the first man, and there wasn't anybody else there. So he could say, you're in charge of everything, right? They were in charge of everything. But I've already said that when God was talking to Adam and Eve, He was talking to Larry and Sherry. He was talking to you and He's talking to me. And if He told them to subdue the earth and have dominion, where is the earth? Earth and vessel. Everybody say, I am the earth. Come on, say again. We are the world. Oh, we are the children. We're the earth. So when He says,
says, subdue it and have dominion. He's saying, be the boss over yourself. He's saying, don't let the devil run roughshod over you. Kick him out of the side saddle. Say, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more. Because the law of dominion says that somebody's going to be the boss. Amen. Amen. So it's called also law of perpetual transmutation of energy. And that says that energy never dies. Energy just is. It could be positive. It could be negative. But scientifically, whatever's negative can be turned to positive, and whatever's positive can be turned to negative. So what am I saying in the law of dominion? You can either be the boss, or you can be the slave. You can either take your life in your hands and say, I'm going to increase, or you can let somebody put you down and, and be in the decrease. And guess who gets to decide? You do. You decide when you don't decide. When you don't make a stand, when you don't take a stand, when you don't say, I'm going to do something about this. The transmutation of energy, it doesn't, there's always energy. There's always something. Somebody's always going to be the boss. Now look, don't walk on your job tomorrow and tell your boss. There's a perpetual transmutation of energy that I learned about in church yesterday. And I'm going to need you to go get me a cup of coffee. Please don't do that. Look at somebody say, please don't do that. What I'm talking about is you, you, what you create, what you create. He said to have dominion, to be the boss. Quit being hooked on something. Quit being told that you have to feel this way or you've got to be sick or you've got to be um, in trouble. You don't have to have any of that. You just have to have dominion. You've got to subdue this. Because sometimes it's wants the donuts when we know that the donut is not what we're supposed to have. It's quiet. So do it. Have dominion. Sometimes this wants to tell somebody, oh, let me tell you something. Subdue it. Have dominion. You be the boss. You be the one that's in control of you. Quit letting somebody push all your buttons. Quit letting somebody pull all the strings. Quit letting the doctor tell you you're never going to get well from that. Quit letting your banker tell you, well, you're just going to go broke. You're going to have to declare bankruptcy. Quit, quit letting something or someone else have dominion over you and subdue this and have the dominion. Amen. 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 To every domain, there's a king. It's his reign. And it's our reign. He said, if you suffer with them, you'll rule with them. God has called us to be kings and priests unto him. He didn't call any of us to be back door, back seat, back of the bus Christians. He called us all to be first class citizens of the kingdom of God. He called us all to be king's kids, robed in righteousness, with everything that we need in seed form already planted. He called us to be faith people, Jesus name people. People of love, people like him, people that attract to him as the salt of the earth that makes people thirsty for the water of life. I'm going to get you to bow your heads and your hearts. I'll take a little help. Father, right now, I've delivered my word. I've delivered my soul in this word today. I believe that there is an invitation to increase. And Lord, I took a little time with it. And I know, Lord, that sometimes concepts and Things, Lord, that are a little past what we've ever heard before can be challenging notions. But I'm asking God that the seed of the ever-living God take root in the hearts of the people uh, in this room, Lord. And that we would understand that you've already told us to be fruitful, to multiply, to increase, to be blessed in every arena of our life. And Lord, I'm speaking over bodies today. The healing virtue the bomb of Gilead. The way that you created the bodies to naturally heal themselves. If you're sick today. I want you to put your hand on your body. I want you to subdue and have dominion. Say, I speak to my body. Be healed in Jesus' name. I speak to Trey today. Trey is sick. I send the word to him. In Jesus' name, I send the word out of this place to those that are a part of this household of faith. Be healed in the name of the Lord. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed of addictions. Be healed of frustrations. Be healed of uh, 
financial and um, family trouble. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, there's somebody here, God, that doesn't even know what the road is before them. They don't know what increase looks like. They don't know your plan and your destination, what the gestation of the, of the plan will look like. I pray, God, that you right now begin to form pictures in their mind. That in the theater of, of their mind, they'll see themselves in their futures the way that you desire them to be and the way, God, that they would desire to be. Father, let them understand that you will reflect to them, God, what they put into the mirror. That they'll begin to be smiling, happy, joy-filled, love-filled, grace-filled people. And Lord, let this church be a loving, grace-filled, joy-filled, love-filled place. Let it be in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Whew. That was a lot. Did y'all stay with me? My wife's looking at me like, you are all with it. I'm sorry. But look, the invitation to increase is worth it. You are bigger than your body. In fact, your spirit man goes on the outside of you just a little bit. Do you believe that? A little past you. So will you stand up? Put hands up? Take them up high? Put them up high? Put them up high in a receiving mode to receive God's blessing, His favor. His joy is upon you. Oh, I want you to see that increase coming to you. I want you to see it coming this week. I want you to imagine what it could look like. I want you to imagine what it could feel like to have all your bills paid off. To be debt free. What could that feel like? See yourself walking.